Mrs. John Gilhart. I see some confused faces. Don't recognize that name? That's because they are more commonly known as the Hermit of Deer Allen and his wife, Pauline Lamine Gilhart. Mrs. Mr. Gilhart was born and lived in France until he was 22. He came to the United States in 1900. Remember our beautiful island. Uh, the kings and queens of Europe never seen such beauty. My only regret is that I found how I knew midway through my lifetime. Now, now, John, I am grateful for the time that we spent together. And I must admit, by the time we met, I had taken the beauty of the island for granted. It was just home. But through your eyes, I have rediscovered its beauty, and I'm grateful to you for that gift. You know, not many women in our time owned and operated their own businesses, much less a silent movie theater. Ah, uh, yes, but this is how we met. I paddled a boat out to the island to see a movie. If memory serves me right, the title was uh, The Forbidden Path. But it was my path to you, my dear. The only other businesswoman that comes to mind is Elizabeth Hahn, the proprietor of the Magnolia Hotel. Of course, her business was on the mainland. Owning, an, owning a business on an island in the early 1900s had its challenges. We. Oui. But you were tenacious. And a, a quality I admired about you right away. After all, had tenacity, had tenacity not been a part of my nature, we may never have met in the first place. If you recall, I was the proprietor of a very successful turtle. Turtle. It said, this makes you fatter. <laughs> I was the proprietor of a very successful turtle soup processing company in the Florida Keys. I trusted an unscrupulous broker and lost my fortune. I took what was left of my money and went in search for the pizza. Oh dear! Not in front of the strangers. Right, right. Uh, all the water under the bridge, anyway. However, at my search for the. However, my search for the bandit led me to Biloxi and what was the end of my savings. So perhaps I should thank him, should I meet him again one day. He was the love of my life and the most interesting of my four. Three. Three wives. <laughs> you are also the most level headed. The oyster industry may not have been appealing to strong women, but you all you supported me fully and we made a great success of it, no? Yes, yes we did. If I recall correctly, we employed up to twenty workers at one time and till the fire. Oh no no, money more. Let's not recall the pain. Only the love. <sighs> yes, it was very, very difficult to rebuild. But we had to, and we did it, no? My biggest loss was your death. So shortly after we rebuilt, everything lost its meaning for a while. Then, in 1947, the Great Hurricane and everything again was lost. I spent the storm clinging to a tree. <laughs> Many of the residents tried to persuade me to go to the mainland, but to leave our home, our island. How could we do such a thing? Sean. I am not certain I wanted to survive, but survive I did. But I did not rebuild the house this time. Instead, I built a small one-room building in which to spend the rest of my days simply with my dogs on our island. The many of the residents, oh, the bigger family, asked me to be a, a, a security guard for the island. A sort of a night watchman, you might say. We are having trouble with young vandals at night. And uh, I must admit, I enjoyed scaring the youngster with my uh, frightening appearance. Oh, yes, it's hard to believe you were once a barber in France. <laughs> <laughs> my own camp de Perrance is not the title one of the finest men I ever knew. Capitaine Louis Coinflot. Capitaine Louis Coinflot is the finest man. He would often help me. He, <laughs> not long after the hurricane, he came calling with a fine bottle of French wine. And how could one refuse such a gesture? He, uh, I had seen him. He, he operated a tour vessel that chartered uh, tourists around the channel and through the islands. I had never met him, but he came visiting. He, he, asked me if I, uh, he asked me if I had enough to eat. He was very concerned about me. I assured him I was fine, and uh, my rowboat took me back and forth to the mainland to, to get provisions. He offered to help me. He, he nailed a mailbox to a pine tree, and I would leave money in a grocery list. And he would retrieve them and leave a newspaper. Later, local boys would row out to the island with my provisions. It was a great system. That sounds like a wonderful deal. But tell me, what do 
did you do for Captain Gornflow in return? Yes, well, he uh, needed something of interest, something uh, unusual to, how do you say, uh, spice things up. I added spice to his thought. I would go out to the island, uh, go out to the boat, the sail fish, and I would entertain his guests. <laughs> entertain, you say? Oh, uh, yes, I would tell him stories from my life, uh, our life, uh, <laughs> sometimes sing a French song and do a little dance, tell a few jokes. I must admit, it was a very interesting way to spend the rest of my days. After I became sickly, though, I went to stay with our grandchildren in the St. Malcolm community. We had a lovely life together, John. And I'm so grateful that our island is being kept in such wonderful condition. It's been acquired by the state of, the Miss of Mississippi and the Department of Marine Resources. So, to ensure that future generations will always have your island to cherish. Oh, thank you all for visiting us today.